Thanks for joining us here at Dayspring. If you are a regular Dayspringer, welcome home. Our weekly live stream service is one part of a new rhythm for our church family. And it will most likely continue to be our primary means of gathering together for the foreseeable future. Church services, like so many things in our world, look different right now. But we're still connecting, still worshiping, still growing. And because of the Holy Spirit who unites us, we are still together. We're glad you've chosen to worship with us this morning. Perhaps you're new to Dayspring. We're excited to be a part of your spiritual journey. We are committed to helping people just like you experience every blessing God has for you as you grow deeper in love and devotion to Him. We believe with all of our hearts that as you grow in your love for God, you will grow in your love for others and will experience a changed life that impacts others' lives as a result. If you have any questions or want to learn more about us as a church, you can always explore our website at dayspringfellowship.com. I'm Chris Voigt, lead pastor at Dayspring. Please feel free to contact me if you have questions about today's message or your spiritual journey. If you want more information about Dayspring, I'd love to help you get connected into our community, as strange as community looks in our culture right now. For today's service, you can find study questions and notes in the resources section of our website. And now, let's worship together. Let the power of God fall down on us. Let the power fall down right now. Let the power of God fall down on us. Let your power fall down right now. Let the Spirit of God pour out on us. Let your Spirit pour out right now. Let the Spirit of God pour out on us. Let your Spirit pour out right now. For your glory and you only, what you say is what we'll do. Let your passion become action. Holy Spirit, come and move. Because Jesus, we rely to glorify your name. So let your spirit rise among us now as we sing, Jesus move. Let the love of God come alive in us. Let your love come alive. Let the love of God come alive in us. Let your love come alive right now. For your glory and you only. What you say is what we'll do. Let your passion become action. Holy Spirit, come and move. Because Jesus, we rely to glorify your name.
lived Hard on the wire Hand in the fire for so long You showed me better A new kind of love It's ever the one I want I'm lifting you higher, higher There's nothing that I'd rather do A sweet elevation of praises There's no one I love more than you I've never known a love like this before The kind of life that I could not find on my own I've seen the world but I have never been so sure I want your heart God, I just want to be where you are Where you are Oh, I just want to be where you are Like nothing I've seen My wildest of dreams don't come close But I've never known better Than living like this I cannot resist you, Lord I'm lifting you high there's nothing that I'd rather do A sweet elevation of praises There's no one I love more than you I've never known a love like this before The kind of life that I could not find on my own I've seen the world but I have never been so sure That I want your heart God, I just want to be where you Where you are Oh, I just want to be where you are Where you are Oh, I just want to be where you are And after all this time with you by my side I can't imagine what it'd be like on my own I've made up the heart This love is all I've got You're the only one I know worth living for A sweet elevation of praises There's no one I love more than you I've never known a love like this before The kind of life that I could not find on my own I've seen the world but I have never been so sure that I want your heart God I just want to be where you are where you are oh I just want to be where you are where you are oh I just want to be where you This is a new one we want to teach you this morning. I think you'll catch on. Not the words are fantastic. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you And if you are for me Who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Oh, when all I see is the cross, God, 
Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. An almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. And almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Battle belongs to you. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. I will bless your name Oh yes, I will sing for joy When my heart is heavy all my days Yes, I won't fail me now in the way the same God who's never late is working all things out is working all things out yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I
that nothing can stand against And I choose to praise To glorify, glorify the name of all things That nothing can stand against Oh yes, I will lift you high In the lowest valley together. Father, it takes great discipline and great faith to be able to separate ourselves from our circumstance, to separate our worship from our circumstances and worship you regardless of whatever is going on around us. And I guess one blessing of this year, such as it is, is that You've been teaching us what it means to worship you. Worship you in the valleys, worship you in the mountains, worship you in the, in the waiting. The reality is that it really doesn't matter what's going on around us. You are worthy of all praise at all times. May we worship you that way. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Dayspring. No matter where you are, no matter who you are, we are so excited that you are joining us this morning. Now, if you are joining us this morning, we would love to know that you are doing so by filling out one of our communication cards. That just lets us know who's watching as well as it, you can put prayer requests or any info in there you'd like us to know about. And alongside with that, you know, we have our giveaway thing we've been doing uh, for quite a while. So if you fill one of those out, you will be entered into a giveaway to win something. And last week's winners were Dave and Cheryl Rempel. So congrats. changing at least the fact that we're uh, holding something. Now, it's going to look a little different because of uh, the CDC's guidelines around trick-or-treating and all the social distancing rules around that. So, it's going to look a little bit different. It's going to be on Saturday, I believe, and uh, it will be time. It's going to be all around different different We try out the place and game. Games with you and your family in your car, and you'll learn candy that way. So you can't need candy for this event. So it's you to come by, donate, drop it off at the church office. Uh, so you can support that event. But we're looking forward to it. Uh, it will come along as we uh, get closer to Halloween. Now it's my now is the time that we get to switch to the message, and this week we get to hear it from Pastor Michelle Snook. Thank you, Pastor John. Well, I had the opportunity to spend the day with my youngest daughter recently. We needed some emotional renewal, so we headed off to the beach, and it was a beautiful 80-degree day, not a cloud in the sky, and the power of God and the surf, it was just what the doctor ordered. 
Now, we have had some family heartache recently, and we were discussing how we navigate hard times. My daughter asked me, Mom, how do you handle things like you do when you had such a terrible childhood? How did any of your siblings turn out even somewhat normal? Well, my answer was to her, for me, by the power and grace of God and a lot of counseling. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you meet us in every situation and every need. We thank you, Lord, that your heart's desire for us is to be whole and to be healthy and to have a very connected relationship with you. So as we process this morning, Lord, I pray that you would look into the deepest places of our soul. We give you permission to have your way there in Jesus' name, amen. Well, my mother was mentally ill, and as a result, I was not able to, uh, she was not able to really be a mother. But God blessed me with four older sisters that took on that role. Although they did not live in my home as I grew up, they were married, they had homes of their own, I spent a lot of time with them. And it was there that I learned how things were actually supposed to look in a healthy family household. My journey to emotional health was long and it was difficult. And that's probably why I take emotional health so seriously. That and the fact to be, that to be spiritually mature we must be emotionally mature. Our spiritual growth can only go as far as our emotional growth goes. We can see an example of this in someone who is, um, has a substance addiction. The reason people in recovery often seem emotionally immature is that oftentimes they stop growing emotionally at the time that they start abusing drugs or alcohol. So, if I start using at the age of 13, when I become clean, I'm still emotionally about 13. When I'm trying to mature spiritually, my emotional immaturity can stunt my spiritual growth. Most often, we don't even realize it. We're plugging along, doing life, and we can't figure out why certain things really bother us or when they actually shouldn't, or why we have a hard time giving grace, or getting along with someone, or why we, why we always need to be in control of things, or why we're codependent, or maybe we don't even recognize any of those things in ourselves, but others sure do. One author wrote, Emotional health and spiritual maturity cannot be separated. It is not possible to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature. When we ignore the emotional component of our lives, we move through the motions of Christian disciples, activities, and behaviors. But deeply rooted behavioral patterns from our past continue to hinder us from an authentic life of maturity in Christ. We often neglect to reflect on what is going on inside us and around us, our emotional health, and are too busy to slow down and be with God, that contemplative spiritual, spirituality. And as a result, we run the high risk of remaining stuck as spiritual infants, failing to develop into spiritually, emotionally mature adults in Christ. We are in a season where we have the opportunity to reboot our lives, so to speak. Today, we're talking about an emotional reboot, the renewal of our emotional self. As believers, we cling to the verse from 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. We assume that this verse means that the moment we receive Christ, we're completely new creations. And that's true in some ways. We are now heirs of Christ and completely forgiven. That's new. But although we are new creations in Christ, 
we still carry around that old emotional self until we work through any unhealthy tendencies that stem from our past with Jesus. For most people, this process is a hard and maybe even painful work, but a necessary work. Christ wants us to be free from anything that hinders our walk. He wants us to live and be free in the abundant life that he talked about in Matthew eleven, twenty-eight through 30. Let's look at that. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. When we come to Jesus and process anything that is unhealthy in our emotional lives, we receive renewal and freedom. That's part of the new creation we are becoming. How do I know if I need... uh, to grow in my emotional health? Well, I was reading an article um, on spiritual health recently that talked about eight symptoms of an emotionally unhealthy Christian. You might recognize one or more of these symptoms in yourself. We'll talk about that at the end of the message. But for now, I want to pause. I want to take a minute and allow you to ask God to pray asking for a reboot in any or all of these areas. I want you to allow your heart and your mind to be open to anything he wants to reveal to you. Have a willing spirit and mind so that you might recognize one false layer or bandage that God is inviting you to remove today. So let's just pause for just a moment. And I want you to pray for your own heart. Are we ready? Okay, let's do it. Number one, using God to run from God. This one can be hard to recognize. After all, practicing spiritual disciplines like prayer, excuse me, reading the Bible or other Christian books, doing Bible study, being in a small group and the like, they're all stepping stones on the pathway of discipleship. But... They can also become God activity that keeps us too busy doing to actually be present with God long enough for him to work on the painful areas he wants us to acknowledge, grow, and mature in. Do any of these seem familiar to you? Uh, Doing God's work for my own satisfaction, not necessarily because I'm focused on pleasing him. Praying my will, not his thinking I'm better than another because of the things that I do for God, hiding behind Christian words to keep others from seeing the real me, selectively applying biblical truths so that I don't have to make any significant changes in my life, using scripture to devalue or judge someone else. Remember, his yoke is easy and his burden light. Are we carrying our own yoke for our own fulfillment, or are we actually aware of his yoke for us and focused on pleasing him and not others? Number two, doing instead of being. This point sounds a lot like the first one, but it's a little bit different. Point one refers to being busy for God so that we can avoid what we may need to deal with and or maybe to feel worthy or valued? Do I assess my worth by my busyness? The second point, doing instead of being, refers to being busy for God instead of being with God. Sometimes we seek validation or self-work through the things that we are doing for God instead of experiencing them by being with God. Focused time in his presence is what I'm talking about. Stopping long enough to be truly present in his presence. Like 
Chris talked about last week, being unhurried. Unhurried enough to just be in the presence of the Lord, to experience him and know him deeply. King David said this about being with God. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. That's from Psalms 16, 11. There is no greater joy than being in the presence of God. Number three, ignoring negative feelings such as anger, sadness, and fear. You could throw hurt in there as well. One of my favorite scriptures is Isaiah 41.10. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Notice it doesn't say anything about not feeling afraid or discouraged. It says don't be or become that's different than experiencing a, a feeling and dealing with it, letting it go, and moving into God's truth. As Christians, we often think of unpleasant feelings as evidence of not having enough faith or even as sin. If my faith is solid, then I should not feel this way. Wrong. God created us in his image. God has feelings. One author wrote, to cut them, meaning feelings, out of our spirituality is, is to slice off an essential part of our humanity. If we for force ourselves to move through the feeling, then we can allow God to come into that feeling with us, draw us near, and grow us through whatever the situation is that is causing that negative feeling. We don't like to feel bad. We don't like our loved ones to feel bad. That's why there's so much addiction and so much codependence. Anything to avoid feeling bad. You know, if we name our feelings, we can tame our feelings. And what I mean by that is if we take enough time to evaluate what and why we might be feeling the way we do, then we can work through those feelings rather than letting them control us. For instance, I'm hurt. Why am I hurt? Because when Sally said such and such, it reminded me of when I was young and my mom or my dad or my brother or my pastor said such and such, and I still carry that hurt. We can take a painful memory to the Lord and seek healing from him for that heart wound that is much better than just numbing my feelings with unhealthy choices, such as shopping, eating, internet browsing, gambling, substances, ignoring, or any number of unhealthy choices. It leads us to our fourth point, denying the impact of the past on the present. Peter Scazzarzo appropriately calls this denying our shadow. We must face our shadow, those things in our past that have caused us to develop unhealthy or destructive patterns that prevent us from loving as God has designed us to. We have all heard the analogy of the rear view mirror, and it's usually used when referring to keeping our eyes focused on Jesus. Don't look beside, don't look behind. Keep your eyes focused on ahead, which is true. Also true is that if we don't deal with the baggage from our past, it just gets heavier and heavier until one day we can't carry it anymore. In the meantime, we try and push our bags onto other relationships or we hoard our bags and we don't allow anyone to help us or to sort them out, neither of which is emotionally mature. Number five, spiritualizing away conflict. Some of you might feel this one. As believers, somewhere along the line, we've allowed our understanding of what it looks like to love the way Jesus did to become confused with being nice. 
instead of having hard conversations and growing together, we nicely sweep things under the carpet until we trip over them and it's just about enough to break our neck. Healthy conflict resolution is definitely a sign of spiritual maturity. Avoiding conflict is definitely a sign of spiritual immaturity. I did not say that you have to enjoy the conflict, but avoiding conflict only allows the ugliness to fester and the problem to grow out of proportion and relationships to suffer or even completely fracture. We are called to be peacemakers, not peace fakers. You can't make peace without handling the situation. Number six, playing the spiritual hero when you feel like a spiritual zero. Emotionally healthy people are able to be appropriately vulnerable, um, even about their brokenness, their weakness and failures. I don't know where the idea that we must maintain this facade of being spiritually strong all the time originated, but I do know that the enemy sure likes to use it to mess with our minds. Can we just honestly admit that we don't have it together, none of us is perfect, and we're all sinners? The enemy of our souls loves for us to get wrapped up in guilt and shame because it hinders our walk and it hinders our effectiveness for the kingdom. Guilt and shame are never from the Holy Spirit. Only our enemy uses those devices and they are designed to keep us stuck in an unhealthy place. Holy cow, look at the spiritual giants in the Bible. They all had some brokenness, weakness, or failure in their lives, and they were the heroes of the Bible. Scripture says, the sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. That's from Psalm 51, 17. Number seven, living without limits. Chris uh, covered this one very well last week in his message about not living a hurried life. And if you didn't hear last week's message, I encourage you to check it out. And if you did hear last week's message and maybe haven't made any changes, I encourage you to prayerfully listen again. We have got to take appropriate care of ourselves and slow down. Number eight. Judging other people's spiritual journey. Now before we get too far, let's ju just define judge in this context. Judging here is to form an opinion or decide upon critically. It's, um, it's, what we think of our, it's when we think of ourselves better than or more spiritual than someone else. This one is a danger to us all. We think that we can determine where someone else should be, what they should be doing, what class they should attend, to quickly move to the pace we want them to be. It can even get to the point of judgment on our part. Praise Jesus that he has a specific development plan for each one of us, and that he is patient, and that he is loving, and he helps us along when we need help. Sometimes those lessons are more or less pleasant than other lessons that we experience. Yes, he uses us to help and encourage one another. He does not, however, use us to be the Holy Spirit for one another. That is his job, not ours. If we want to be spiritually healthy, we must become emotionally healthy, period. The challenge is that oftentimes we don't even recognize that we need help. We're so used to being who we are and where we are that we either don't recognize the need for growth or we refuse to do the work that it takes. That's just the way that I am. Well, it might be the way that you are, but it's not where God wants you to stay. 
He is all about transformation, and if we don't think we have any transforming left to do, we are just setting ourselves up to experience the sovereignty of God in ways we might rather not. Let's take a look at John chapter 5. We're going to look at verses 1 through 8. Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside of the city near the Sheep Gate was a pool of Bethsaida with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, Would you like to be well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Here we have a man who was ill for 38 years. Jesus asks him the question, do you want to be well? We have to ask ourselves that same question. Do I want to be emotionally healthy, same as emotionally well? Am I willing to ask myself, what might one unhealthy coping strategy, one facade or false layer God is inviting me to remove today? We also see the man make excuses for his 38-year illness. He says he can't because there's no one to help him and that others get in the water first. And it appears that not only does he rely on someone else to provide the help he needs, his focus is on the water doing the healing. He doesn't even know that this man, Jesus, is the mighty healer. More times than I care to say, we are waiting for someone else to do the changing or the moving or the getting healthy while we lay on our mat and make excuses for why we are not where we should be emotionally and spiritually. Jesus longs for us to experience healing, to have our broken places mended, whether we recognize our need or not. This man on his mat didn't know who Jesus was, yet Jesus approached him and asked him if he wanted to be well. Jesus may use a counselor or doctor or medicine or any number of things. The point isn't how. The point is that he can make it possible. He is in the business of transforming lives. But there is usually hard work involved. Jesus said, pick up your mat and walk. Most often we grow and heal from a difficult journey of discovery. Discovering both who we are, who we aren't, but more importantly, who Jesus is. I want to encourage everyone listening to this message. Think through these eight points. Is there one or more that you can claim? If so, it's time to reboot your emotional life. Contact Pastor Chris or myself or someone else you know that can guide you if you need help with some next steps. We are in this with you. All of the pastors at Dayspring have done hard work in their own personal lives to continue their own growth processes. We understand the challenges and the rewards And we understand that we are in a continual process of growing and maturing and that we will always need to be mindful of where the next place of growth might be. The most important thing in your life is your spiritual growth. And that includes maturing emotionally. Now is the time to renew your emotional health and continue your transformation into the man or woman that God is growing you up to be. Let's pray. Again, Lord, so thankful that you are in the business of transformation. Help us to be in the business 
of being open to that transformation. Help us to be in the business of the hard work it takes for some of those difficult journeys. Help us be in the business of spurring one another on in the health and life of Jesus Christ. God, like never before, have your way in us that we may become more like you. And it is in your precious, holy, healing name that we pray. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you next week. It's been our honor to have you join us in worship today. Whether you are a regular Dayspring attender or just visiting, we'd love to walk with you on your spiritual journey. Feel free to drop us an email if you have questions or want more information. If you'd like to partner with Dayspring financially, we have three easy ways for you to give. You can check out the online giving section of our website, text GIVE to the number on your screen, or mail one of those old fashioned checks to us. Make sure to subscribe, share, and like our live stream wherever you watch it. Until next week, may the grace of God bless every aspect of your life.